Hello everyone, welcome to my presentation. My name is Jeremy Richard and I'm a doctoral candidate at McGill University. Today I'll be presenting on a recent research project I've been conducting entitled Loot Boxes and Video Games, a Scoping Review of Associated Sociodemographic and Psychological Characteristics. So let's begin this discussion by discussing what are loot boxes. Loot boxes or loot crates are virtual items in games that contain randomized contents of differing values that can be purchased with real world money. They are prevalent across all gaming platforms and distribution channels, including both free to play and paid for games. When it comes to the money generated by loot boxes, in 2018, this revenue was estimated at around $30 billion. And in 2020, these numbers went down to about $15 billion. There are major concerns surrounding loot boxes and how they may share structural and psychological features with gambling. They may trigger similar emotional or arousal responses in gambling, which can lead to possibly dangerous cycles of overspending and various harms associated with loot box purchasing. Loot boxes really bring to light this complex interaction between behavioral addictions, financial health, and personal well-being. Recent research has identified that greater expenditure in loot boxes has primarily been associated with problem gambling, problem video gaming, and also significant mental distress. Anecdotally, there have been various reports about the harms of loot boxes, including some young people making outsized expenditures into loot boxes in the tens of thousands of dollars, which compounded with their previous problems with gambling or gaming. There's also some reports of individuals seeking treatment for problem gaming, reported significant debts associated with loot boxes. So there's a clear concern here that requires further attention um, on the research side, but also the intervention side of things. Since 2017 and 2018, there has been a serious legal debate surrounding loot boxes. This debate is primarily surrounding the question of, are loot boxes a form of gambling? And if so, should they be regulated as such? This legal debate is often juxtaposed between the potential benefits of harm minimization and the unintended consequences of legislation, such as reducing free market choice, decreasing developer revenue, and the burdens of enforcement in addition to limited consumer freedoms. Several jurisdictions around the world are currently investigating legislation for loot boxes, while others have ruled that loot boxes violate national gambling legislation. When looking at the gaming industry, their general statements have generally been, there is insufficient evidence to state that loot boxes have negative consequences for gamers and they are not a form of gambling. These discussions raise important questions for policy and prevention. These include what are the consequences of the so-called gamblification of gaming, and who is at greatest risk of these consequences? Are individuals being conditioned by the arousing features of these loot boxes to the point that their need for this excitement becomes harmful? Can expenditure escalate dangerously, compounding other problems such as behavioral addictions and lead to significant financial harm? And also, are high spenders comprised primarily of certain populations, such as problem gamblers, problem gamers, or other at-risk individuals? Now, these questions bring us to the study objectives of the present study. The first objective was to summarize and review the existing literature on loot box purchasing in association with various sociodemographic and psychological characteristics. Secondly, we wanted to derive implications for future research, policy, and prevention based on these findings. In this section, I'll provide a brief overview of the methodological features of this scoping review. First, we searched seven different databases across different disciplines to identify articles investigating loot box purchases. On this slide, you can see the various keywords that were used to conduct the search, including variations of terms for loot boxes, all the different sociodemographic characteristics I was looking for, and also of the psychological characteristics that have been noted as being relevant in the literature. Here I've provided an overview of the inclusion and exclusion criteria. To be included, articles had to be published in the last 10 years, be observational descriptive studies that looked at the association between loot box purchasing and sociodemographic or psychological characteristics, and could be of any um, population of any age or any country. Articles were included, though, if they did not include original empirical findings, if they were treatment studies or experimental research, and if it was other published media that did not contain original research, such as newspaper articles.
This slide provides an overview of the screening process for the articles captured in the search. At first, 343 articles were identified, but after duplicates were removed, abstracts and full texts were screened, a total of 21 articles remained and are included in the review. As a broad overview of the results, 90% of the studies were cross-sectional studies, so only measured these variables at one time point. However, there was one longitudinal study. There was also an aggregate study that took the results from six cross-sectional studies and came up with an overall um, statistical analysis of the results. Most studies looked at adults. However, there was a substantial population of adolescents and adolescents and emerging adults that were also captured within this literature. When looking at the countries represented in this research, the primary countries captured were the United States, United Kingdom, with some studies looking at Australia and Canada, but a large amount of the studies were international or the samples, it wasn't reported where the samples were from, and this is because a lot of this research was conducted through online surveys. To give a brief overview of loot box purchasing based on this research, prevalence rates indicated that about 7.8 to 78% of adults purchased loot boxes. For adolescents, this ranged between 3.5 and 52%. But what's important to note here is that the sampled populations really impacted these prevalence rates. So if you looked at esports betters, it was about 72%. Free to play gamers or gamers familiar with loot boxes, 44 to 78%. But then if you look at the general population, that ranges between 3.5 and 24% reporting purchasing loot boxes. So that's an important factor to take into account when considering these findings. When looking at the amount of money spent on loot boxes, the mean was about $3 a month with a median of about 10 to 17.50. The range was huge, between zero and $2,300 a month. What's important to note here is that 50% of the revenue from loot boxes was generated by about 5% of the top spenders, so those spending more than $100 a month. So to begin to look at the association between sociodemographics and loot box opening, let's look at gender. Males were by far purchasing more loot boxes than females. So in studies it showed between 55% and 93% of loot box purchasers were males. So this was replicated in adults and also adolescents. When looking at age, it's a bit more complex. Here we could see in some studies looking at adolescents that it was older adolescents that were spending more money on loot boxes. But in adult samples, it was typically younger individuals. So those in studies that were of age 18 to 60, age was negatively associated with loot box purchasing. Overall, what this indicates to me is that it's these older adolescents, emerging adults, that seem to be purchasing at a greater rate loot boxes. As for ethnicity, no differences were reported as of yet based on that variable. When looking at socioeconomic factors, loot box purchasers were primarily employed, achieved a lower level of education, were less likely to be single, and were in the lower to mid range of income. So that's about $24,000, $20,000 a year. Now there's a lot of information presented on this slide, but I'm keeping it here for reference purposes. I'll briefly just give an overview of what's been found in the association between problem gambling and loot box opening. 13 studies have identified that there's a significant positive correlation between problem gambling severity and loot box expenditure. To paint this picture, about 81.8% of daily loot box users could be categorized as having gambling problems. Now this is really interesting when looking at adolescence, where this association between problem gambling appears to be and loot boxes appears to be stronger among females when compared to males. One recent study actually looked at this association during the COVID-19 pandemic and identified that this relationship was even stronger amongst gamers practicing self-isolation. When looking at the amount of money spent 
um, and looking at problem gambling severity, what one can notice is that no problems with problem gambling, these individuals will spend about $1 to $5. But if you look at problem gamblers, these ones will spend about $20 to $40 per month on loot box purchases. Looking at problem video gaming and loot box purchasing, these correlations were also significant, finding a significant positive association between problem gambling and loot box spending. This was found among adults, but also among adolescents. Looking at the risky loot box index, once again, you could see a significant correlation between problem video gaming and risky loot box purchases. Um, with a high proportion of the sample endorsing these risky loot box opening behaviors, also claiming to be problem gamers. It's interesting to compare problem gambling and problem video gaming, and some studies measure both. What those results tend to show is significant associations for both, although if you were to compare the effect of these variables, problem video gaming had a larger effect than problem gambling when looking at loot box purchasing. As for the other variables that were measured in this research, one can note a significant correlation between risk-taking, positive mood, negative mood, and psychological distress and loot boxes. There was mixed findings with regards to impulsivity, with some studies finding a significant positive association and other studies finding no association. It's interesting to note how positive mood was associated with loot box purchasing, and this was um, exemplified in the qualitative research, finding that loot box purchasing really increased level of fun and excitement in the gaming experience as well. As for social factors, we can notice that bullying was a risk factor for greater loot box expenditure, and so were various substance use behaviors, including cigarette smoking, vaping, and cannabis use. An interesting association was also seen between various social influences and loot box purchasing, where if you had peers that were purchasing loot boxes, you were also more likely to do so. Now this has some implications for prevention and research. Looking at prevention, it might be considered if there's various harm minimization techniques that could be designed to limit the financial harms experienced by gamers in relation to loot boxes, right? So if there could be in-game features um, that create hard caps, um, limits, or self-exclusion options for loot boxes, that could be useful for these high-risk populations, high-risk groups. Also, given the role of social influences in loot box purchasing, psychoeducation within schools, elementary and high school, could be beneficial to raise awareness of the risks associated with loot box purchasing. There could also be potential warnings included on games um, that indicate that these types of loot box mechanisms are included. With regards to intervention, if you're working as a clinician, for example, working with problem gaming or even problem gambling, it could be important to assess for the frequency of loot box purchasing or risky loot box purchasing behaviors um, and then implement various cognitive behavioral strategies to help reduce these behaviors when at the same time treating the primary problem, which would be difficulties related to gaming or gambling. For policies, I would argue that there's no evidence for a need to apply a broad regulatory framework across all microtransactions and games. You know, what should be focused on primarily are these loot boxes, these purchases in game that offer a random chance of a reward of differing value. These seem to be the microtransactions that are primarily associated with problem gambling, problem gaming, and some mental health features. Um, some policies that could be considered surrounding loot boxes could be age restrictions, um, the inc integration of responsible spending provisions within games, um, the inclusion of odds, the odds of winning certain items within loot boxes, um, the reduction or removal of various marketplace structures that allows for the selling of loot boxes um, or the items within loot boxes, or even mandatory parental advisories or content descriptors for games that contain loot boxes. As for future directions for research, um, some continued research should investigate the differential effect between problem gambling and problem gaming, gaming in association with loot box purchasing. There's also this potential amplification if one has both of these problems that should be further investigated. There's also a need to better understand motivations of those spending a lot of money on loot boxes each month. 
with also the need to look at other mental health symptoms that might be associated with loot box purchasing, such as internalizing or externalizing problems, or even looking at psychological needs, needs for autonomy, relatedness, competence, and how those are related to loot box purchasing. Finally, there's also a need for more longitudinal research, looking at these associations over time and understanding the directionality of these associations. Thank you all for your time, and I hope you appreciated this presentation.